welcome students today we are going to talk about human genetics the pedigree analysis that is involved to study certain human genetic diseases so to start with let us introduce ourselves to the word genetics the word genetics is greek in origin which means to study genes but the precise definition of genetics was given by bateson and he told that genetics is the branch of science that deals with the study of heredity and variation heredity as we all know is the transmission of characters from one generation to another say for example in a particular family there is a trait of brown eyes and it is but obvious the young ones of that family will be having the same color of brown eyes but sometimes in the same family we may have green eye color rather than the brown color and that is what is called as variation and what causes this variation is again of the interest of a geneticist so i'll be talking about the human traits that are transferred from one generation to another generation and what are the reasons behind that to start with we all know that humans have the chromosome number of 46 this was for the first time established by tijo and levan that the chromosome number is 46 by culturing the fibroblast cells that is the cells that yield fiber like white fiber yellow fiber and reticular fiber that is present in our body later in the year 1960 a convention of geneticists was there in denver and the 46 chromosomes were classified into the groups of a to g that is in the group a we have got the chromosomes numbering from 1 to 3 in the group b we have got the chromosomes numbering from 4 to 5 in the group c we have got chromosomes numbering from 6 to 12 including the sex chromosome that is x In the group D we have got 13 to 15th chromosome in the group E we have got 16 to 18 chromosomes in the group F we have got 19 to 20 chromosome number and in the last group we have the rest of the chromosomes including the Y chromosome very important here is to understand that this classification was based on the certain criteria number 1 criteria was the position of the centromere that is the point of attachment of two sister chromatids if this centromere is attached present at the center of the chromosome the chromosome is referred to as metacentric chromosome and if this chromosome is away from the center we call it as submetacentric if it is towards one end the chromosome is called acrosomic chromosome and if it is near the telomeric end of the chromosome the chromosome is referred to as the telomeric chromosome in humans we have got metacentric submetacentric and acrocentric type of chromosomes one more basis of classification was the lengths of the arms or that is these sister chromatids if the chromosome is centromeric or metacentric we mean by that the length of the arms is equal if it is submetacentric acrocentric or telocentric the length of the arms is not equal and accordingly the one more point here to understand and the basis of classification of human chromosomes is the length of the chromosome at large so three bases of classification of human chromosomes are position of the centromere lengths of the arms that is chromatids and third overall length of the chromosome one more feature of human chromosomes is the presence of nor that is nucleolar organizer region and it is present in 13th 14th 15th and 20th and 21st chromosome pairs which we call also as the satellite chromosomes because this nor region causes a secondary constriction and is present somewhere at the end of the chromosome 
near the telomere and it gives it a circular or oval lining which is referred to as satellite. This NOR as we all know has the function in organizing the nucleolus of the chromosome. The 46 chromosome number as we all know is present in humans are paired in 23 pairs. Each pair is referred to as the homologous pair which actually come in pairs during the meiosis particularly the prophase 1 of the meiosis 1 and these homologous pairs exchange their segments during the phenomenon of crossing over and which is what is the cause of variation of the traits among the family. These homologous chromosomes are similar in length position of centromere is same as well as the arm length is same in case of homologous chromosomes. One more important point here is to understand is that the banding pattern of these homologous chromosomes is similar and that is why we call them as homologs. Now what does the geneticist prefer in the organism that it wants to study? Number one is that the lifespan of the organism under observation should be small. There should be very large number of offsprings that the organism can produce. The homologous chromosome in the organism in question should be having the same alleles that is it should have isogenic characterization as far as genes are concerned. This can be achieved by inbreeding the homologous pair. And also very important point that a geneticist will like to have in the organism under observation is the controlled breeding. All these characters that I have just talked about are very important as far as the genetic study is concerned. But why man is not a favorable organism for the genetic experiments? All these characters that I have talked about are either present or not present. By far the large number of observations are done by means of a pedigree analysis. Why pedigree analysis? I will be talking about it in the due course. Number one reason for that is that the members of the human race are by far heterozygous for a particular character. That means if my eye color is brown I may not be having the genes that are homozygous for the brown color. That is because the gene for that in my mother and parent will be different. Maybe brown color was the character of my father and the green color was the character of I in my mother. Therefore, brown color being dominant over green, I have got the brown color in my eyes. But not only eyes, all other characters that are present in my body will be having heterozygy as far as the genetic study is concerned. Second, the major constraint in the humans is that they cannot have controlled mating. That is the genetic experiments which are which require the controlled mating is not possible among the human population which is by far also the unethical phenomenon because in genetic experiments we require the inbreeding which means marrying the brother with the sister which is unsocial and unethical. That is why it is not acceptable in the human population. The number of progenies that are present in the humans is not very large. The number of offsprings in the present scenario is not more than two and last but not the least is that the human lifespan is very long reaching from 60 to 80 or more years. That is why a geneticist will not like to have genetic experiments in the humans. Now that is why an alternate for these experiments on humans have been worked out and by far following are the alternatives for the human genetic experiments. Number one is the pedigree analysis. Number two 
is the amniocentesis number third is the karyotyping number four is the study of twins number five is cell culture study biochemistry and other things have also been worked out now pedigree analysis what is pedigree analysis pedigree analysis is making a family tree of the particular family in which a family track of the particular character in a population is tracked by drawing certain squares circles lines and other things that will help geneticists to reach to a particular conclusion what make made an geneticist to go for a pedigree analysis is the presence of an unusual trait in a particular family say for example in a family we have got color blindness in a family we have got hemophilia we have got muscular dystrophy or other traits which makes a geneticist to look upon where from these unusual traits have come and what is the chances of the future generations to have these unusual traits the organism or the individual where from the geneticist gets or catches the attention is referred to as propositus that is this propositus will be having either the down syndrome or color blindness or hemophilia etc which catches the attention of a family a family goes to the geneticist and wants to know the future of the progenies or wants to know where from this particular character has come in their family there are different notations that we use in the pedigree analysis number 1 is a circle which means we are representing a female second is the square which means the representation of the male a shaded circle that is completely shaded will represent the individual called propositus in which the character was seen for the first time a half shaded circle will mean the carrier of that particular character the horizontal line between square and a circle will mean the marriage between male and female a vertical line arising from the horizontal line will represent the offsprings of that particular couple in the present illustration non carrier male is getting married to a female a horizontal line between them will show the marriage between the two a vertical line represents the offsprings the present couple under illustration had two offsprings one male and one female male is completely shaded that means this was the organism which caught the attention of the pedigree analyst it got married to a normal female and it had four offsprings three of them male and one female but one completely shaded square means one of the sons of the couple was having the character under question now pedigree analysis is very important tool for a geneticist to undergo certain recess, uh, to undergo study of certain recessive traits or the diseases that are because of gene disorders the genetic disorders which are gene based can be recessive or they can be dominant certain autosomal recessive disorders are cystic fibrosis phenyl ketone urea called pku skull cell anemia tay sachs disease xeroderma pigmentosum again in the illustration that has been shown is that of an autosomal recessive pedigree chart in the chart you can see a female is having small a small a and the male is having capital a and a note of interrogation
small a and capital A represents here the autosomes, the autosomal character under observation. Capital A is the dominant and small a is the recessive. The point here to understand is that autosomal disorders when they are recessive can be expressed only when the genes under question are in recessive mode that is small a and small a. This is a homologous pair of the gene in question. The couple got married. It had two daughters. Since the daughters were having capital A and small a that is they were heterozygous for the character under observation. Therefore, capital A being there that is dominant character they could not express. That is why they were normal females. They got married to the normal males. Again, the geneticist does not know the character of the second gene. The first daughter had one daughter and the second daughter which got married to the normal male had two sons and a daughter. And the third generation of it was having one daughter that was having the character under observation. The son that was again suffering from the autosomal recessive disease and one daughter that was normal. This illustration shows the inheritance of an autosomal recessive disease. One of the autosomal recessive disease is that of skull cell anemia in which the RBCs that are usually oval and circular in outline get skull shaped because of an gene mutation which results in the change in the shape of the RBCs when there is deficiency of oxygen. The point here to understand is that this gene mutation occurs in one of the protein chains of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has got four chains, two alpha and two beta and in the beta chain because of the point mutation, the glutamine is replaced by valine. This is what is called as point mutation. At a particular point, a particular amino acid is being replaced because of the mutation in a particular nitrogen base of the gene, which results in the change in the morphology of the RBCs. What are the causes and what are the repercussions of this change? Number one is that this deformed RBCs cannot pass through the capillaries present in the alveoli causing blockage and therefore has got lethal effects on the human being. But this skill cell anemia has been selectively adapted for the tropical habitats of Africa where because of the prevalence of malaria since the parasite of malaria resides in the RBCs and a healthy RBC can harbor large number of parasites of malaria they have been selectively you know, picked in that, trop in that habitat so that they could survive more than the, those having the normal RBC shapes. Autosomal dominant pedigree chart has also been worked out. The difference here is that the gene here is carrying deformation in the dominant gene and that is why those type of characters are seen in large number of population. Here male and female both are the sufferers because of the deformed gene which is dominant, which is reverse of the autosomal recessive disease where only the male gets sufferers and females are the carriers of that particular uh, deformed gene. Polyductyly Huntington's disease are the autosomal dominant traits and these polyductyly and Huntington's disease is seen equally in males and females also. Hemophilia is another disease that is because of the autosomal dominance traits and 
a family tree of a royal European family has been worked out, where it has been seen that this trait has passed from the Queen Victoria, which was the sufferer, to the third and fourth generations of that particular family. So, friends, we have talked about human genetics in brief, the number of human chromosomes, the classification of human chromosomes, and also we have tried to talk about the pedigree analysis, the different notations that are used in pedigree analysis, and how we can trace the particular character in a particular family by means of the pedigree analysis. Thank you very much. Thank you.